This is Banjo, and today I'm going over the Methanol Water 50 boost system found in the 109K4 in DCS World. The first step is to ensure the Methanol Water 50 boost switch is below the altimeter is in the left position, which is its off position. And the second step is to ensure that we have Methanol Water 50 selected in the rear tank, otherwise catastrophic results can and will happen. Boost pressure can be observed on the gauge just above the electronic kill switch. By bringing up the controls indicator, we can see that war emergency power is on the last 5% of the throttle. The boost system will only be activated if war emergency power is activated and the boost system is enabled by use of the Methanol Water 50 boost switch. Observe the boost pressure as seen to the left of the indicated airspeed and above the electronic kill switch. As we can see, the needle jumps up in between the minimum and max ideal boost pressures as well as RPM going up to almost 3000 and manifold pressure going to the top of its scale. Disabling the boost is as simple as disabling the boost switch below the altimeter and pulling back at a war emergency power. With the basics of use out of the way, I'll unpause active pause and we'll get to see it in use. The boost system itself will cool the engine resulting in an immediate 100 horsepower increase due to the fact a cooler engine can pull in more air in addition, enabling the boost system enables much higher supercharger boost levels which under optimal conditions can increase engine power by as much as 500 horsepower. Higher altitudes will negate the boost effects, although the cooling effects are still noticeable and can be used to cool the engine at any altitude in the event of an emergency. Under ideal conditions, the boost can be used continuous for 5 to 10 minutes. Although due to the strain on the engine running at almost 3000 RPM, I wouldn't advise running it too long. Now if we have a glance over at our coolant and oil temperatures, we can see they haven't climbed much at all during the whole time I've had the boost active, which gives an example of the cooling benefits as we'd have overheated our engine running it this hard this long already. Now with basics of use out of the way, I'll run a couple of maneuvers using the boost system at max throttle for the next minute, and you'll get to see how it works in use. I start by climbing into a dive, and at this point, right before I get into the dive, speed bleed off is generally pretty bad, but as we can see, the boost prevents from dropping too far. At this point we're in the dive, so we'll pick up speed. But as I come out of the dive, I'll go into a bit of a hard climb and we'll get to see how much altitude I can gain in a short amount of time. As we'll see, speed will bleed off pretty bad due to the uh, angle of pitch I'm pitching up to here in this climb, but watching our altitude, it's quite impressive how much you can really climb with the boost system enabled. And if we examine our temps one last time, we see they're no worse than we started with. Which is probably, arguably, the best part about the boost system is the fact that it doesn't overheat your engine. In fact, at higher altitudes, it will cool your engine. With everything done, though, we will turn off the boost system, pull out a war emergency power, and call it for this video.